Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I have just recently completed every single quest possible that you can do on a One Defense Peer. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the entire list of quests that One Defense Peers are able to complete without getting defense experience. Within this overview, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on what quests I think are essential for you to do as a One Defense Peer. I'm also going to tell you which quests I think are advantageous for you to do, but are not necessarily required, and I'm also going to list off all the quests that give you different types of combat experience that are beneficial for a peer. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Have you ever wondered what are all of the quests that you can complete on a one defense peer in old school RuneScape R? As of April 6th, 2024, I have completed every quest that you can possibly do as a one defense peer. This even includes all of the new quests that were released into the game as part of the new Varlamore expansion. Here is the entire list of quests that you can complete as a One Defense Peer. This is a picture I made of my quest log of all of the quests that I have completed on my peer. I will also go ahead and leave a direct link to this picture in the description below. As you can see, I have a total of 254 quest points. Currently, there are only 28 quests in the game right now that you can't do as a One Defense Peer. If you happen to be viewing this video at a later date, let's say approximately a year from its release, it's likely that the overall number of quests that you can complete as a One Defense Peer will have increased due to the addition of more content into the game. Have you ever wondered which quests are absolutely essential for a One Defense Peer to do? In my opinion, among all of the quests available for One Defense Peers to do, here is a list of essential quests I recommend for those building a 60 attack peer. Keep in mind that opinions may vary on this, and it's alright if others disagree with this selection. Everyone has their own unique approach to building a peer, and your own account goals may be different from others. These quests that I have chosen are in no particular order of how they should be completed. When I was originally compiling this list, I approached it from the perspective of a newcomer eager to build a peer account for the first time ever. Each of these quests brings something specific and necessary for all aspects of a 60 attack peer. Monkey Madness 1 gives you the ability to wield the Dragon Scimitar. Lost City gives you the ability to wield a Dragon Longsword and a Dragon Dagger. Recipe for Disaster gives you the ability to wear mythic gloves. Desert Treasure gives you the ability to use ancient magics. Animal Magnetism gives you the ability to use an accumulator, which is good for retrieving your range ammo. Horror from the Deep gives you the ability to equip god books, and each god book provides a different bonus along with plus 5 prayer bonus. And Death Plateau gives you the ability to equip climbing boots. These are pretty much the standardized quests needed for building a 60 attack peer. Another quest that I think belongs in the essential category is the starting of Dragon Slayer 1. You do not need to finish this quest. If you do, it will give you defense. You only need to start the quest. I say again, you only need to start the quest. Now let me explain my reasoning for choosing this quest before I get my head torn off in the comments section. Starting Dragon's Lair 1 gives you the ability to use anti-fire potions and to be able to equip anti-dragon shields. If you are building a peer account to go PKing, you are going to want to start this quest, especially if you are going to join a peer clan. When peer clans fight each other in the wilderness, the majority of them use Dragonstone Bolts, and without being able to sip an anti-fire potion or being able to equip an anti-fire shield, you're probably going to get hit at random 60 out of nowhere by a Dragonstone Bolt proc, and ultimately end up smacking your forehead across the floor. Here is the list of quests I consider to be advantageous for building a peer. What I mean by that is that these quests are not essential or required to do. However, if you do decide to complete them, they each will provide some sort of benefit or luxury to your account. Mountain Daughter gives you the ability to equip a bear helmet, which actually has really nice defense bonus. Technically, you don't have to complete the quest to wear the bear helmet if you don't want to. You can just stop after you kill the bear. Monkey Madness 2 gives you the ability to use a Royal Seed Pod. A Royal Seed Pod is a one-click teleport that can be used up to 30 Wilderness. You can also chain or barrage the monkeys down in the MM2 caves as well. Desert Treasure 2 gives you the ability to equip the new best in slot Ancient Rings. The Ultra Ring gives plus 12 strength bonus. The Venator Ring gives 10 range attack bonus and 2 range strength. The Magus Ring gives 15 magic attack bonus and 2% magic damage increase, and the Bellator Ring gives 20 slash attack bonus and 6 strength bonus. Haunted Mind gives you the ability to use Solve Amulets. Solve Amulets can be enchanted and imbued to provide a 20% increase in accuracy and a 20% increase in damage dealt for melee, range, and magic. The Solve Amulet is really useful for things like Slayer or certain wilderness bosses. Underground Pass gives you the ability to equip an Ivan Staff. Ridgeside gives you the ability to equip a Dragon Halberd. Roving Elves gives you the ability to equip a Crystal Bow. A Kingdom Divided gives you a Book of the Dead after completing the quest. This allows you to summon Greater Thralls. Greater Thralls are like little minions that help you deal damage in combat. Dwarf Cannon gives you the ability to use a Dwarf Multi Cannon. This can be used to help train your range or complete Slayer tasks faster. The Great Brain Robbery gives you the ability to equip a Barrel Chest Anchor, which is a high hitting two handed weapon. Sleeping Giants gives you the ability to start Giant's Foundry, which ultimately allows you to equip a Colossal Sword. 
which is also a high-hitting two-handed weapon. Song of the Elves gives you the ability to use a bow of Ferdinand, which is more commonly known as a bofa since nobody actually knows how to pronounce the name correctly. It also unlocks both the Gauntlet and Corrupted Gauntlet, which can be done to make some good money. Here is a current list of all the different quests that peers can do that give combat experience as a reward. Please feel free to pause the video if needed. These are all of the quests that give you attack experience. Total experience from completing all of these quests is 70,100. These are all of the quests that give you strength experience. Total experience gained from completing all of these quests is 93,537. These are all of the quests that give you hit points experience. Total experience gained from completing all of these quests is 36,325. These are all of the quests that give you range experience. Total experience gained from completing all of these quests is 21,397. These are all of the quests that give you magic experience. Total experience gained from completing all of these quests is 84,762. These are all of the quests that give you prayer experience. Total experience gained from completing all of these quests is 48,431. Now this list of quests is unique because they provide some type of bonus experience reward after completing the quest, such as an XP lamp. A Kingdom Divided gives you two lamps granting 10k experience each in any skill of your choice that's over level 40. A Tale of Two Cats gives you two lamps that provide 2.5k XP each in any skill of your choice over level 30. Contact gives you a combat lamp that provides 7k XP twice to any combat skill of your choice besides prayer. Client of Karen gives you two lamps that grant 500 XP each in a skill of your choice. Desert Treasure 2 gives you three lamps granting 100k experience in a combat skill of your choice, or in prayer if it's above level 60. The Great Brain Robbery gives you a blessed lamp that grants 5k experience to any skill of your choice that's over level 30. Monkey Madness 2 gives you two 50k experience rewards from the NPC Duke in any combat skill of your choice besides prayer. One Small Favor gives you two lamps granting 10k experience in any skill of your choice that's over level 30. Shadow of the Storm gives you 10k experience in any combat skill of your choice besides prayer. And X Marks the Spot gives you one lamp granting 300 experience in any skill of your choice. I hope you found the information in this video helpful and are able to use it to your advantage in building your peer account. There is a saying within the peer community that has been around for a long time now and it's stuck with me ever since I heard it. Build the peer you want, not what others tell you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And as always, thank you guys for watching, happy questing, and I hope to see you in the next video.